uh, Cindy Gallagher here at Saney's. I wanted to provide you some updates from the Board of Regents meeting this week, as well as some items that we're working on with the legislature. Um, the legislature is in its last two weeks of session, and the Board of Regents are certainly dealing with some very timely issues. From the Board of Regents, I wanted to highlight uh, just a couple of items. First of all, APPR. Um, the Board of Regents are preparing to get in a mode for developing regulations. Quick recap. You may recall that the statute when passed um, basically said to school districts that if you're happy with your collective bargaining agreement, fine, it stays in place until you start to enter into a new collective bargaining agreement where the new statute would actually become in effect. So there is no rush into regulations at this point, but the uh, regions do want to make sure that they understand where the field is at this point and some input. So this week's discussion on APPR was um, primarily focused on SLOs. And there certainly was a wide range of understanding on the part of the members on why you would ever have group metrics as, as part of an SLO process when these are individual teacher evaluations. So most of the focus of that conversation was, in fact, how do group metrics that are attached to an individual teacher's evaluation process used and what are the benefits of group um, SLOs such as uh, grade level or school level or district level SLOs work in terms of a teacher evaluation. Um, one of the interesting focus here was in fact the idea that um, I think from the field what the Board of Regents are beginning to hear and what I know for sure State Ed has heard is the idea of thinking about this possible new process to become more of an input model as opposed to an output model. So if we are going to be using assessment scores, let those be the inputs used to develop an evaluation that is more based on and geared toward the idea to be used for professional growth as opposed to um, a strict student performance objective. So that was that conversation. It was very interesting. The second one that I want to bring, item that I want to bring to your attention was in uh, regard to the increased numbers of re increased persons who are required now to um, report uh, child abuse if suspected. So the uh, law that was passed and the regents uh, began to discuss corresponding regulations that would have OT, PT, licensed speech pathologists, bus drivers, and bus driver supervisors um, need to become mandated reporters as well as the training. This was a discussion item. The regulations will go out for public comment and are anticipated to be voted on in September. One of the um, last items, and there were several other items, but these were, I thought, ones that I would want to bring to you all, was in regard to substitutes. You may recall that in previous videos, what I uh, began to discuss how the regions were talking about the issue of shortage of substitute teachers. And you might recall that both of those uh, items on the agenda became very contentious and the issue was just held. This particular item talked about, first of all, the need and the criticalness of um, shortages in districts. So before the regions really went further into thinking about regulations on either requirements for substitute teachers or hours that teachers, the substitute teachers or days could um, really work within districts, they wanted more information. So you will see on the uh, slide that's before you um, some basic information on substitute teachers I thought you might find interesting. So the mean or the average uh, days absent for, uh, for teachers was 9.9 .9 days. I mean, clearly the substitute teacher issue was tied in with teacher absences. So 9.9 .9 days on average, but that really doesn't tell you uh, anything about the outlier districts or, or what the range is. Interesting, for the 2017, 20, uh, yeah, 2017, 2018 data, the uh, range went from point. Uh, one day that substitutes are needed to a high of about 28.2 days. They also began to talk about um, chronic absenteeism in uh, certain areas, and they also wanted to talk about the fill rate. This was um, an interesting discussion. So the fill rate for the ability of a district to actually fill the vacancies needed should teachers be absent was ranged from um, 
59% to a high of 94%. The Westchester area is having difficulty, clearly uh, finding substitute teachers for vacancies. 94% um, ability to find substitute teachers was in the Jefferson Lewis area. So I'm sure we'll see more to come in terms of regulations on substitute teachers, but um, that was another item, again, discussing how we want to deal with the issue of substitute shortage. There was one other uh, topic, but I don't want to go into a great deal of um, because it is a huge item that we will write about and present either in our emails or our next news note in the fall, but that on substantial equivalency on how school districts now, um, not now, it has been, but an expanded role of uh, local school districts in the determination of equivalency of instruction in your non-public and independent schools. I want to take a moment and just talk to you about three or four legislative bills that we have been working on. The first one is A706 and Senate 5472. This is a bill that we oppose. Um, it, would, it would allow school districts to permit students who are, home, who are pro being provided instruction at home to participate in interscholastic sports. Um, we have taken a position that this is, that interscholastic sports is really a benefit of being enrolled in a public school setting that in fact interscholastic sports are an extension of an instructional program that builds not only academic um, requirements, uh, but as well as school culture. So we are opposing that bill, but it did uh, go out of committee just today. I want to talk to you a little bit about S4007-A, and that is the probationary tenure bill. This would say that uh, a an administrator who has prior tenure and moves to another district, the probationary period would be reduced from four to three years. That made it out of the Senate, and we are working diligently with the Assembly to um, get that out of committee so that it can go to the floor for a vote. I want to talk to you uh, about another bill that just came on the scene really recently, and that's S5205. A7624, and that's um, a bill that would restore due process to those school, in, school personnel with civil service titles, and it would provide them with a due process um, procedures that are really uh, already afforded to many other employees in various employee associations. It would say that the impartial hearing officer had to be jointly agreed upon by both parties, that the employee would be paid during the uh, hearing process, and that the impartial hearing decision must be implemented. That's an important one to us, and we are working uh, diligently to make sure that this bill gets traction and can see us through towards the legislative session. We'll keep our fingers crossed on this one. And then basically, I want to talk about one last one, and that is S5314, A7837. Many of you know that the election law was uh, changed so that any uh, employer had to give three hours of time off without pay for their employees to vote um, on, on, on the primary and combined election days. So that would be very difficult on school districts. So Senator Mayer has proposed, um, Meyer has proposed a bill, the one that I just gave, that would basically present an exemption for school districts so that um, any employee who did not have four consecutive hours of uh, time off or time ability to uh, vote either before a school opened and the voting, uh, uh, the voting places were open or after school before uh, the voting uh, places uh, closed um, would be a carved out, would be exempted from having to provide the paid time off. Um, we are hoping that this bill also can make its way through session and are working uh, diligently with both houses to make sure that it, it's got some traction as well. Please feel free to give a call on any of these items. Um, it is a busy time for all of us, but I don't want you to be uh, not involved with any kind of discussions that we are on your behalf. So thank you. It is a pleasure working uh, here at Saney's on these important topics for all of you.